Hello and welcome to How to Read an Inch Micrometer. Part 1, we're going to cover the parts of a micrometer, how to measure, how to clean a micrometer, how to take apart and reassemble a micrometer, and how to hold a micrometer. Part 2, we're going to do micrometer reading examples, so please stay tuned. Also in the description below, there's going to be a link to some worksheets so you can practice on your own. There'll also be an answer key included. Okay, hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a micrometer. This is an inch micrometer. Let's go through and talk about the different pieces first. Do we know what this guy's called? If you know, shout it out. Oh, good. Most of you guys said ratchet stop, some said thimble stop, and some of you may have said cowbell. <laughs> we'll get to, we'll get to this later on. What we have here is the thimble. This part here. This part here is the sleeve. This is the thimble graduation. This is the sleeve graduation. This is the spindle. Right here. Anyone know what this is called? Is it anvil? Excellent. How about this guy? That would be the spindle lock. Locks in place. Unlocks. How about this guy here? The frame? Excellent, excellent. Those are the main parts. Let's take this apart now. Should I take it apart? Yes and no. And we'll get to this. So as I come across here. There's not really a lot you can do with this part. Except for, do you see how clean it is? This is extremely clean. Um, this micrometer hasn't been used in 20 years. I just pulled it out of the box now to make a video. <clears throat> this part of the sleeve here, this collar, can be tightened. I don't know if we can see this or not. Do we see the split in the sleeve on the inside? Okay. As I tighten this up, it'll actually compress this collar around here, which will tighten around the threads, which will make it a little bit more resistance. In all honesty, if you need to adjust this, it's time to replace the micrometer. Now you're saying, well, why would you take it apart like this? Sometimes you need to clean them. You want to use a light spindle oil and then blow it off with air. Light spindle oil in here, blow it off with air, especially if you're using uh, in dangerous or harsh environments like an EDM machine because EDM oils carry small abrasives which really wear these things out quite a bit. Okay. Now how to measure. I'm going to go through this in a stationary video because it'll just be a little bit easier but what I want to point out is for every revolution here, as we go through, we go and we say, okay, here we go here. We are at, actually go back down to zero. Oh, we have one more thing we need to do. To test each one, this is zero to one, so it's pretty easy. I can test it here, but you should also test it in an open spot. That's your feel. I don't know if we can get a good, that's pretty much spot on. So. That's zero, so then every, that's one thou, two thou, three thou, four thou, five thou, and as we go up, all the way up to each one is 25 thou. So each one of these lines here represent a 25 thou. Here, each one of these lines represent 25 thou here. Each one of these larger lines represent hundreds of thous. On all micrometers, you're only going to get a one inch travel, okay? So how do I get a two inch mic? Well, there'll be a two inch space. And what I would have to do is check it against a one inch gauge block. Uh, how do I clean the actual anvils? I wanna clean the spindle and the anvil. The best way or the way that I use is a piece of paper. Put it inside. Now this is gonna do two things for me. 
Okay, as I tighten it up, I'm going to pull it across. I don't want the paper to rip. And it usually leaves a bit of a black mark, but I'm not really seeing anything because I've already cleaned it once. That did two things for me. I could feel the compression on the paper. And if it would have ripped on this side or on this side or on that side, I would know that the anvil is out of alignment. You can also use optical blocks or optical flats to check the alignment between the anvil and the spindle. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we have here. Each one of these lines on the thimble represent one thou. Each one of these tiny lines represent 25 thou. And these large lines represent 100 thous. So let's take a look at the number that we have. So we have 100 thou. And we're above the 25 mark, so it's 125 thou. Wait, there's a second scale here, which is this one. This scale here is called the Vernier scale. So we're kind of almost halfway in between, but not quite. So let's take a look at the side. And let's take a look and see. Does the three line up? Nope. Does the four line up? Yes. Does the five line up? No. So it's four. So this size here is going to be 0 0.1. Two five four. That'd be four tenths. Okay, for our exercises, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to take photos from this area here. You cannot really do the vernier unless you have it in your hand because you get parallax error, and we'll cover that later on. So all of ours will not have the vernier in for our demonstration. Okay, something else that I wanted to point out, when you're looking on the vernier line, this here will be your zero line. Your zero line and your ten line will always line up with each other. Okay, so if you look here, if we're right on here, one's close, two's a little further away, three's a little further away, four's a little further away, five's a little further away, six is a little further away, now it's getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay. Just wanted to point that out to you. Okay. Now, why I call this the cowbell? You hear that? You think, oh, that's the perfect feel. Problem is, you don't have any feel when you're here. You must actually hold on. Now, I'm doing this because I'm doing a video. It's hard to do everything all at once. But you must get a certain feel. So you're holding the part and moving the part at the same time while you're getting a set feel. Okay, now it is possible for me to turn around and do something like this. Say, so, okay, go back, I can get my repeatable number. You can tell with absolute certain that that's not in there. But by jiggling the part and turning at the same time, you get a set feel. And this feel that you have here, the amount of push, I guess you could say, is the same amount of push that you set up with your gauge blocks. Okay, how to properly hold on to a micrometer? You want to hold on to it with your pinky inside here so that you can hold on to this and get a perfect feel or permanent feel with your fingers here while you're moving this piece. Because then you know you're firm up against. Okay, so with your pinky in here, you will not be able to drop your micrometer. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have. Uh, each one of these small lines here represent 25 thou. So that's 75 thou. This guy here equals 100 thou. That would be 125. That would be 75. That would be 50. That would be 75. So let's write out what we got here. We have a 1.100 thou. And then we have a 75 thou. Then we have a 10. 11, 12, let's add them up, 7, 8, 1, 1 1.87, let's try another one here, 
are we at the 200 mark or are we not at the 200 mark? So let's go through. We know this is the 100 mark. We know this is the guy's the 25, the 50, the 75. But right here, we can clearly see the 200 mark. Since we're at here, and this is our zero mark, we're, we're above the 200 mark. So this would read 0.200. Then this guy here represents 1. 0.2. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, 001, which equals 0.201. Oh, oh, Therefore, this micrometer measurement is 201 thou. Take a look at what we have here. We have our 100 thou. We have our 200 thou. Our zeros here for our spindle. We go up and we're at 5. So let's go to 200. Point 200. We have to add, we have to add the 5. Point oh, oh, 5. Therefore, we're at 0 0.205. Let's take a look what we have. We got a 1, 2, and a 3. So 0 0.300. We have a 25. We have a 50. 0 0.050 and this one here is our zero line this one lines up with the zero line so 0 0.001 and we come up with 1530 so 351 thou okay let's take a look and see what we have here we have one two three four 0 0.400 400 thou and we don't have a 25 but we do have a 10 0 0.1 therefore 410 410 thou and it's a bit of a trickster so we know that this line here is zero and we know that each one of these guys here it's 25 thou, so that would be uh, 25, 50, 75, and this guy here would be 100. So let's fast forward now all the way to the end here. This guy here represents one full inch. So that would be 1.000. But now let's take a look here. If this continued on, there would be another line right here. Well, there isn't another line there. This line here needs to line up with here for that to be on the 25 line. So there is a 25 line here, although it's not drawn. 0 0.025. And then this line here represents 1. 0 0.001. Therefore, 1.026 is what this micrometer reads. Well, hopefully this video teaches you how to read an inch micrometer or helps you refresh your memory on how to do it. If you got any value from this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks again.